Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Virgo in November 2020. What is going on, Virgo? How are you guys doing? I hope that you are doing well. All right, guys, welcome to November, one month out before the total end of 2020 is behind us, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, uh, wherever you are in the world uh, at this time, Virgo, I hope you are happy, safe, healthy, and secure. Please continue to take very good care of yourselves and those that you know and love. Uh, 2020 is still very much outside, doing its thing, being being whatever it's meant to be in the long run. So again, please take all precautions as you're out and about and, and interacting with other people. If you will be celebrating Thanksgiving at the end of this month, I hope you have a wonderful day with your friends and your family. If you are getting together, again, please take those precautions uh, because we want to make sure everybody is safe and healthy at this time, okay? Uh, Virgo, no other announcements, so let's just go ahead and get into it. Anything you want from me, Virgo, it's already in the description box. If you want the timestamp, it is down there. Information on how to purchase a personal reading with me, it is also down there. If you have a question before you place an order, just email me at the same address and I will answer you as soon as I can. Uh, feel free if you are if you want to, it's never expected, but it is always appreciated. If you're interested in doing a donation, feel free to use the PayPal app link or the cash app link below to do a donation towards the channel. Again, never expected, but always appreciate it if you if you if you want to do that. I never ask. It's just something I offer to you guys if you if you if you ever feel so inclined. And uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, the name is Empathic Fire Tarot over there. Feel free to use the link down below so that you can easily drop the follow over there. Okay. Uh, anything else? Nope, nope, nope. So let's go ahead and do it. Virgo's outcome for November, please. I'd like to see the outcome for Virgo in November 2020. Please show me. Outcome for Virgo in November 2020. Please show me. Really? Hmm. Thank you. I was about to say, we're going to have to pull it manually if it didn't pop itself out. But there you go. Mm hmm. Which way for Virgo, please? Like that. Okay, thank you. Alright, and that's crooked, so that's going to bother me. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's flip what came face down. Alright. Let's see what's happening for Virgo in November. Please show me where Virgo is in November 2020. Please show me. Hmm. All right, we got it. All right, Virgo, coming in to November, you come in with the energy of the Ten of Cups. <clears throat> very nice, very, very nice. Feeling happy, feeling secure, feeling stable, emotionally speaking. Possibly some of you are madly in love or feeling the love of family and friends or, you know, any and all of the above. Um, but it feels fulfilled. It feels very... Uh, gracious is the word I'm getting and humbled uh, so maybe you know on the nose for some of you at this time during Thanksgiving uh, towards the tail end of the year where the big holidays are why does it say I might be having performance issues why okay there we go <laughs> it's back to normal um, but maybe you know as the holidays are coming closer um, Thanksgiving Christmas Hanukkah uh, Kwanzaa, whatever you might be celebrating towards the end of the year. Um, it's just, I feel like a warmth is, is bubbling up in your heart and like a fullness with that full moon in the corner there is, is coming upon you. And I like it. It's good. It's positive. Yay. Um, <laughs> hopefully there's no complication, but you know, in most tarot readings there will be. So I think this is either what you are feeling or what you hope to feel. Um, this is what you're possibly in some of your cases, 
um, really going for after maybe a troublesome year. Uh, like I said in the opening, 2020 is just doing its thing. And for many people, it's been not very kind or it's been kind of weird or uh, certain changes or shifts are happening and people aren't necessarily prepared for them. But I think, you know, Virgo, I'm getting out of this. You're trying to make the most of it. If, if you've suffered several losses of any type in your life and you have the opportunity to share, uh, you know, positive and loving feelings with other people, I think you're going to take the opportunity, opportunity to do it. Um, again, this aspect of graciousness is coming through. So I like that. I think thematically it's been peppered into a lot of the readings that I've done before you as the sixth sign. You're the sixth one that I'm doing in the monthlies. So a few signs before you have had issue with gratitude, issue with appreciation, and I feel somewhere in your energy it's less of an issue. It's more of like a, I'm, I would be honored, ooh, interesting, I would be honored to give my gratitude towards this person or towards these people. I feel, gosh, another word that is very strong, I feel blessed to be able to express this. And if this isn't you, this could be someone that you're dealing with. It is a it is a general reading, so it can go vice versa or any other type of way. Um, but I, I'm feeling it as I'm like, I put the card down and I'm coming out of that energy. I feel like there is a caution coming. So let's just go further in the energy. Um, well, before we do that, anything else here? Because I feel like... Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I dropped it like right underneath my feet. Is that what I just did? I did. And I'd have to move the table and do all this stuff. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, Virgo, I apologize about that. Um, so I was sitting here before I dropped the card and I was closing my eyes trying to tap back into this energy of the Ten of Cups. And um, one of the traditional things that I used to say about this card, or not traditional, but typical things I would say about this card is dreams come true. So, so for some of you, you might be in the headspace or in, a, in a, a phrase in your life where you're like pinching yourself. You can't believe how lucky you are or you can't believe how happy you are. Um, this feels really positive for, for the majority of you guys. This feels very positive, whether it's truly a part of your reality or it's, again, something that you're hoping for, wishing for, praying for, that you're optimistic about. I don't know. But I do get this sense of like dreams come true. So like some of you, maybe you're hearing good news. Maybe you've heard back about a job or a relocation, something like that I'm getting for a few of you. Um, others of you. It really feels like counting your blessings is what this feels like. Again, maybe, uh huh, there it is. They're like in retrospect, in retrospect, in retrospect. They keep giving me that in retrospect. So, for that group where it's like really going well and you really have something that's tangible or that you really can feel happy about, congratulations. There's another group of Virgos here where retrospect, 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 okay? So, this is what you did have. Mm, okay, there we go. I knew, I knew it couldn't last. <laughs> and I don't wish that. It's just like typical of tarot readings, especially a general. Um, but let's let's continue on. Let's see what else happens. So what else happens for Virgo? Please show me. Hmm. Yeah, it's like... <sighs> Two songs popped into my head. One of them is kind of embarrassing, but I'll, I will deliver both songs to you. So uh, what's that song called by Boys to Men? End of the Road? No. Well, that is one of their songs. Although we've come to the end of the road, then I can't let go. It's a natural. You belong to me. I belong to you. That song. Okay, that's one of their songs. Another song they had is So Hard to Say Goodbye or It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday. Sorry for my horrible singing. Not at all one of my skill sets. So those two Boys to Men songs just popped in my head. But then another one came in my head, which comes from... <laughs> it comes from a Muppet movie that I used to watch a lot when I was a kid. Actually, watch it also when I'm an adult. Uh, it's from the movie called Muppets Take Manhattan. And in that movie, there's a song called um, Saying Goodbye. So three songs came into my mind about saying goodbye. Um, and in that song... Oh, man, how's it go? Saying goodbye why does it end or something like that 
and something about remembering the good times we had is is a, is a lyric in that song. So three little songs, you could Google them, you can look them up on YouTube, I'm sure you could hear the lyrics. Um, but that's kind of where I'm getting some of you are in this retrospect. Had a good thing, glad you had a good thing, it's bittersweet, it's kind of sad to say goodbye to it. That is confirmed because of this universe card that is beneath the Ten of Cups. Universe, major arcana for Capricorn, also associated with the fixed signs, so Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. You could be dealing with any of those signs or none at all. It is a general, take it with a grain of salt. So Universe is about endings, not necessarily final goodbyes. It could be instead of a goodbye, maybe it's a see you later or see you on the other side, you know, or see you in a few years or something like that. Um, but there is sort of this wrapping up business that's going on with the universe period. Um, I often talk about it as chapter endings in a, in a good book or um, even not a great book, <laughs> but uh, most books have chapters or some type of partitions uh, that signal transitionary points, right? So you close up chapter two, you move on to chapter three, you know what I mean? And there's progression there. I think that's what's going on and I think some of you are lamenting or or if not lamenting, again, still showing gratitude towards all the chapters that you've experienced or read or lived through before this moment. So for some of you, maybe it is saying goodbye to a friend or a family member in some form or fashion. I'm not sensing goodbyes in like a mortal way, even though that could be here for a few of you. Um, but it's more of a, you know, you're going down your path. I'm going down my path. You're relocating here. I'm staying, you know, in, in the hometown here you know, have a good trip, see you when you get back kind of thing. Or it could just be mutual moving on. Like in some of your cases, maybe for some of you, it's like a graduation or something. So like maybe you were in school or in a program alongside a couple of good friends. And uh, now that, you know, the course is wrapping up, everybody goes back to, you know, their, their regularly scheduled program, so to speak. You know what I mean? If you literally... Uh, are a college student or someone who's studying abroad or something like that or living in a college town and for whatever reason you got to move back home hi corona <laughs> you know um it's it's sort of like a oh man you know i was really happy living here in the dorms or experiencing these classes with my with my peers and now i have to leave it you know so there is sort of like this in those situations that i'm describing it's like in some of your cases, you know the ending was there, like it's predictable, the course is wrapping up, the chapter, the particular phase or stage stage that you're in in your life is, is, is coming to a completion and that makes sense. In other cases, again, because 2020 is out here doing what it's doing, it's unexpected, unexpected endings or things coming to a close way sooner than you thought and that could contribute to the bittersweetness of it, particularly obviously the bitter part more than the sweet. Um, but I still get in most cases, Virgo, you're gracious, you show gratitude or appreciation, which has been again, thematic throughout the previous five, uh, readings in some form or fashion. Um, so far it feels like, a. <laughs> I I hate this phrase, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, I hate that phrase so much. Anyway, that, that might be how some of you are coming to, to, to grips with this or you're coming to uh, sort of reconcile with this. It is what it is. There's, there's not much that could be done about it. You know, circumstances or, or, or the influences and, the, and possibly the decision making is out of your hands. So you have nothing to do but, you know, live with it and deal with it uh, because it is what it is. Oh, God, I hate it so much. Anyway, <laughs> so... Possibly, though, there's a deeper meaning for many of you, not all, but there's a deeper meaning for many of you because the universe is, you know, again, associated with Capricorn and thus associated with the planet of Saturn. And there are life lessons in there. Um, there are sort of great pivotal points that can be sort of highlighted when we get the world card or the universe card where it's just like, oh, like, what's the takeaway? Thank you. There's like a highlight or a highlight reel or the takeaway 
um, of the situation. So if you are leaving a course, if you are relocating and, and for the first time in your life moving away from your hometown, maybe for the first time living on your own, because I do get the sense with this universe card about travel. Like I do get for some of you, you literally are leaving and moving somewhere else or someone is doing that in your life and you're staying left behind. And that could be the first time this has ever happened. And you could be, you know, older in your life. Maybe you've always lived in Cincinnati. Hello, Cincinnati, you know, uh, and you've always lived there for 45 years of your life. And now suddenly, because of whatever reason, job, maybe you've fallen in love, maybe you've gotten divorced, whatever, whatever is the detail, the actual leaving of your hometown is bittersweet and is a pivotal point in your life and comes with a highlight reel and comes with a lot of takeaways. I've lived for 45 years in Cincinnati. I've never been there, so I don't know anything about it. But uh, you have a nice listing or a few pages worth in a journal or within your mind that you can look to and go, man, what was Cincinnati about? Who was I when I lived there? Who were the people I knew and loved and, and, and what were our relationships like? Again, this Ten of Cups fulfilled energy. I was really happy to be there. And maybe now I'm going to go live in Belgium or something like that. Or I'm moving down to Florida or I'm moving to wherever. It's, it's like pondering the past and, and considering the past and being appreciative of the past and being like, you know, a lot of things happen that I'm really happy about, and I and, and I'll always look on, back on those oh, those times with fond with fondness. Uh, and other things, you're like, oh man, that didn't work out so well, and I wish I could go back and make amends. But like, not really harboring on that, or not really holding on to that. There's a there's an incredible, uh, I don't want to say detachment, but maybe just an acceptance of of the change, an acceptance of the release, like a gentle release. Like, you know how, I mean, if you have any object such as this, like in my hand right now, I have this crystal, I could place it down like that, gently, for the most part, even though I knocked that card askew, I could place it down like that. That's, a, that's, that's one way to release. Or I could hold it up here, drop it, make a huge sound and, you know, again, knock a card askew. Or I could even place it away from the cards and do it gently. Or I could hold on to it. So I, I think you Virgos... Many of you are considering how to release because the circumstance, number one, is changing. Again, it is what it is. Uh, it feels like, again, circumstances, relationships, opportunities are befalling you, opportunities are going away, whatever, or, or certain experiences are wrapping up because they literally were on a certain timeline. You literally can't, I mean, you can stay in school forever, but most people don't. Um, so if you're wrapping up a program, if you're wrapping up an experience, if you're wrapping up a, a contractual employment status somewhere and now you're going somewhere else, it's just like the way in which you let it go is really on your mind or on the mind of someone else, if this is reverse, okay? Um, and again, I'm getting with this Capricorn Saturn energy that's associated with the universe card, how you choose to react, how you choose to respond, and what you choose to take with you and how you choose to think on those things and feel about them is really your choice. Um, I'm a, yeah, it's been coming up also thematically. Karma is a big thing going on for a lot of people right now. I think some of you might have that in your mind. What am I karmically setting myself up for if you have reason to be upset based on a particular ending or transition point in your life or a pivotal uh, chapter ending in your life, you could maybe be angry about it. I don't know the details. I'm not sensing that whole uh, uh, too too strongly for this energy. But if you did, you have the choice to carry that anger or carry that uh, those upset feelings within you and hold on to it. Possibly hold grudges in some of your cases. You can do that if you want to, but I think some of you are trying to have a quote-unquote higher mind about it or a higher vibration about it and not be bitter and not hold any grudges and not hold on to any salty feelings or any, pardon me, any upset feelings, right? You can choose not to. Like that's a really, 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 really mature way to look at your life or look at this, this phase of your life or, or to, 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 uh, uh, perspective to have or, or, um, point of view. Thank you. A point of view to have, like, it feels very high up, very bird's eye view. That's good. That's very mature. It's very aware. Um, how you will go forward? Will you be quote unquote successful with that? I don't know. 
Ah. Mmm, there it is. You, mm-hmm. Pick it up, freaking hand. <laughs> the High Priestess. So you've been nudged to do this, um, Virgo. High Priestess, secondary major for Cancer, also sometimes associated with Pisces. You could be dealing with a Pisces or a Cancer, but you don't have to be. Um, I think you, some of you have been doing, well, maybe not doing, but maybe, um, Mm, if you've been doing it, it's probably been subconscious. I, I don't feel a lot of conscious energy going here. Mm, if not consistently conscious, let's say it that way. Um, Virgo, I think you've been trying to get the bigger picture of what you're going through right now or where you're going in life and why things have happened the way they've happened and where you've spent those 45, like what, again, what's the takeaway of 45 years spent in Cincinnati, right? you want to have a higher perspective on it. You want to understand it for more than just its surface explanations or its surface uh, um, sort of memories or, or, or things that you can think back on and look back on and feel, you know? There's a deeper context that you're after. And a lot of you don't know that you are seeking it. Or again, you're not, cons you're not consistently seeking it consciously. Subconsciously, though, as this is what the High Priestess talks about, sub subconscious awareness, intuitive awareness, or, uh, or, or alignment, or, or being able to work through your intuition or be in alignment with your intuition, that's what's going on here. Or that's what's on uh, what some of you are tapped into, whether you're aware of it or not. And I like this for you. You're having like a... a a very positive reading, even though maybe not what you're going through is the most positive or happy thing that you're into. Um, happy thing that you're into or ha you're not happy about dealing with it, perhaps some of you. Um, I like it because it's it show it feels growth to me. It feels very ex I don't want to say expansive. That's not right. Um, what the hell just flew into my eye? Okay, a dust bunny. That's fair. Uh, anyway, um, I feel like some of you, you're growing. I don't want to say expansion because I don't think unlike the other signs, I feel other signs are like really like diving deep into their personal philosophies. I don't feel that for you, Virgo. Maybe some of you are, but I don't really feel that's where you're at with it. I think some of you are really just like, <laughs> perhaps you're in an analysis phase that's typical of Virgo energy you're one of the signs of deep analysis and so maybe on a more cerebral way again very unconscious you are doing this work but in your conscious waking hours I think you're just going about doing what needs to be done yes Empress thank you you're going about what needs to be done we're not there yet but I know that's where that came from and so you're not taking the time you don't again really have it in your in the forefront of your mind to think in these terms however the high priestess is here as sort of this reminder or clue into by the way virgo what you're experiencing is something that is um enriching you or or you're becoming enlightened or you're becoming more aware of yourself in a wider aspect like your, <laughs> no offense to anybody, but your small life and the way you were thinking about yourself in context of other people in, in context of certain situations was small. And the high priestess is very wide. Again, I'm like avoiding, for some reason I'm avoiding using this word expansive. Maybe because some of you think like that's a little too like grandiose or something. Like maybe you think like it's a little like... <laughs> like pretentious to use that word. So I don't know, there's like an avoidance of using the word expansive here. Uh, but I've said it, so it's already out there. Anyway, um, but I feel like this high priestess is, is, is highlighting that even though it feels very regular, whatever you're going through, changing locations, graduating from programs, wrapping up of cycles, you know, starting in on new journeys, that feels very regular. It feels very routine. It feels very much predictable for some of you you knew it would come to this like you knew eventually the program would end you knew at some point you'd leave your hometown because you know you just always knew ah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. high priestess you always knew and because you always know because again this is about 
uh, deep intuition and subconscious mind. So you always knew somewhere inside of you, I was going to leave this small town. No offense to Cincinnati. I'm sure it's great. But maybe some of you are like, I just always knew someday I was going to get out of here. I was going to move. I was going to take on a job. I was going to travel the world. I was going to teach abroad. I was going to learn abroad, whatever. You always knew and because that knowledge has been dormant within you or it's always been in the subconscious yet known place, it's like, you know, halfway unknown, halfway known kind of thing, it's not really giving you a drive or giving you this harsh awakening like other signs have had like really, really pivotal or not pivotal, but really sharp awakenings like Taurus really had one and Cancer had one a little bit too. Yours is like really, oh, this is the thing I always knew was going to happen, and now it's happening. Okay. Okay. And because that unknown, or that subconscious, I should say, that subconscious or unconscious knowledge has always been there, that's how you get this empress energy, where you go about things and it's happening in a practical sense. Ooh, interesting. Um, I'm getting this the phrase full circle because of how she's standing underneath these, these trees and it's sort of making a circle around her. And again, the universe is here uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, cluing us into cycles and, and chapter endings and patterns and all this other kind of stuff. Or Yeah, so for some of you, full circle. You always knew, again, you always knew it would happen and it's full circle, meaning it's complete. You've completed a certain something in your life. In some cases, interesting, Empress energy. Some of you have completed your role as a parent, particularly, possibly a mother, because it's very high feminine energy when we talk about the Empress card. Oh, and by the way, this is a secondary major for Taurus and Libra. Could be dealing with one. You don't have to be blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> so some of you maybe have completed a cycle as a mother. What does that mean? Oh, maybe like your child has graduated. Oh, that would make sense. Okay. So maybe like something like that is going on. Like maybe some of you have children who are graduating college or high school or you have children who are leaving the nest for the first time and like now you have empty nest syndrome. Not not wishing that on you, of course, but like maybe that's kind of something that you've... I mean, we all kind of know that, I would assume. Let me take that back. I would assume <laughs> that uh, many people would know that eventually if you have kids, they're going to become adults and they're going to live their own lives. At least that's how I would approach being a parent if I was one. Have, I have no, you know, first-hand experience, so I'm really, really not in a great position to speak, but that would be that unconscious knowledge, right? That would be that known that you know is there, but you don't think about it consciously. You're not aware of it consciously. It just is something that is inevitable. Inevitably, at some point, my role, sort of, kind of, wraps up as a parent as my child or as my children become older, right? So if they leave the nest, if they are finally moving out of the house after 20, however many years, or, you know, maybe 40 something years, I don't know. <laughs> and that role is complete. Not to say you'll never be their parents again, or you're never going to be called upon and dear mommy, how do I make scrambled eggs? It's, you know, those things will still exist. But like that immediate position of caretaker might be wrapping up. Does that make sense? Okay. I think that makes sense for some of you. Others of you, maybe you're wrapping up and you're giving birth. Congratulations, you just gave birth to, if, if you're doing it in November, you just gave birth to a Scorpio. Congratulations. <laughs> but I feel like something is complete, full circle, cycle, something like that. And there's graciousness again here because of this Empress card, which takes us back to the Ten of Cups. The Empress, as much as the Empress is, you know, sort of like, an earthbound goddess, you know, very powerful energy. It does not have to be a female I'm talking about, by the way. You can be a male experiencing this. Um, but there's this earthbound goddess-like energy. And a goddess is what? Untapped, not untapped, but uh, never-ending abundance, right? Uh, never And overflowing abundance, right? Always has something to give to the situation. Always has resources that are available, right? To, to, sustain, this, to sustain the self and sustain others. However... The Empress, slightly different than how you would see the Emperor uh, in the tarot, is very much in the know that everything has an ending to it and accepts it, you know, or accepts the transition. 
accepts the 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 shifting of 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 roles or ex accepts the shifting of expectations right when the empress is in high vibe there are times when the empress isn't in high vibe and things ending and cycles and all that stuff she'd be like shut up i don't believe that blah 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 but i feel most most of you you're experiencing this in high vibe or at least people around you are presenting in this way so again a child goes from being a child to being a young adult and all that kind of stuff to being finally full at some point, finally at some point, a full on adult, right? There's like a, again, like this bittersweet thing. And again, going back to what I said earlier about the 10 of cups, looking back on that time and really like, what are the takeaways? What's the highlight reel about? You know, maybe looking over old photographs of, of your child or your childhood or whatever it is. You know, if, if, and if it's not about children, because I'm really on this child thing and like motherly aspects because it's the empress. We could be talking about something in your business life. We could be talking about friendships of yours or just, again, your own personal development. You as a single person living in Cincinnati, finally moving out and going somewhere else, you know, whatever. There is just a wonderful appreciation, I feel. I really feel you're the first sign that's doing the appreciation work and doing it pretty well. Other signs have struggled with it. Other signs are just realizing, oh my God, I need to be more appreciative or I wish more people were appreciative of me or whatever. I feel it's given here. I think it's, I think it's pretty plain on its face in this reading. Um, mm, interesting. Okay. Uh, she's holding a bag of money and I feel drawn to talk about the money, but I don't know why. So let's figure that out. Why am I looking at this money bag? She's holding a bag of money there. Can you see it? money ah some of you hmm that's interesting i'm getting the sense that some of you are paying for something hmm okay maybe the okay hard lessons okay there we go hard lessons is how they're coming across so there's another group of virgos you have like three or four different groups different like energy strands in this message there's a subgroup here. I shouldn't say subgroup. There's like a smaller group, I think, is more appropriate. Like 10% of you, maybe less. Where you're going to be paying something. And as the empress, male or female, I don't care. And it might not be you. It could be someone else that you're dealing with. The empress has the means, okay, to pay this money. But paying it is bittersweet. Paying it is not breaking the bank, but it hurts someone's pride or it hurts somebody's status or their, their, like it, it's painting someone in a bad light to pay this money, even though it might be the responsible thing that they have to do. Like this could be debt owed and it's being repaid and that would be bittersweet or I would assume well, I'm in debt a little bit, so I understand. When you pay back debt, as much as you're like, oh my God, I'm like lessening my debt, it's also like, Ugh, but now I don't have the money. You know, it's something like that. So maybe some of you are in debt or you're paying off bills or something like that and you have the means, or whoever this is has the means, but there's like this, again, about the release. There's like a possible less... Well, not less. There is a release. You let go of the money. You pay the fine. You pay the debt. You pay whatever. You let it go. You release it. You give the money. No problem. But there's also kind of like a, mmm, okay, got it. Children. Empress. Again, ch uh, for some of you, child support. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Because that's the responsible thing to do. Pay child support. Pay for your children. Male or female. I don't care who you are. And that's a responsible thing to do. And whoever's doing it, they know that they have to do it. They know that legally they're bound and morally they feel very bound to do it. But uh, it's it's like a, mm, and we were talking about leaving and people going on different paths and stuff like that. So I see. Like I'm getting like, and I mentioned the word empty nest. So maybe... There's like some person, male or female, Virgo or not, I don't care who it is, who might be distant, what do you call that, estranged from their children, 
or their child or whoever. And they pay money for this person, alimony, child support, you know, just even if it's not officially through court, maybe you just twice a month or once a week drop off money at a, at a location or transfer money to somebody's account because, you know, the baby needs diapers, whatever the situation is, right? And that's the right thing to do, especially if you're the parent, the other parent of the child, right? But it's sad because the distance is there. Because again, look at the Empress. She's by herself in, in this forest, right? She's by herself amid all these trees. No other humans are here. There are animals there, little rabbits and stuff like that, birds, right? But there's no other humans. There's no other human companions there. So I'm getting like somebody who is doing right by their kids or doing right by the situation, paying their debts, paying towards situations and circumstance and people that need their support. However, the lack of closeness is is bothersome. But at the same time, it's understood or known and there's some lesson or something big picture that this person is is accepting of. Very interesting, gracious again. And that's um, well, I don't want to get too personal, but uh Hmm. I've been told something like that by somebody in my life. It's like, it's like almost, almost being quote unquote forced to love someone from afar. And the only way you can show your quote unquote love is by giving them money. Okay. That's not for everybody. That's for a few of you. And that would p leave the person giving the money, who has the means, again, as the Empress has the means, to do it. It would leave them in a situation where they feel alone. They're not able to enjoy the Ten of Cups fully because of the distance. Hmm. Well, whoever that's for, you have my condolences and you have my sympathy because... I understand that's the reality that some people have to live through, and that's rough, and that's hard. It's like, I feel I feel really sympathetic for whoever's going through that situation. I really do. Um, again, I could speak on it personally, but, you know, another time. <laughs> Moving on, let's see what else happens for you, Virgo. I'm not a Virgo, by the way, in case you didn't know, so it's not that I'm in this story. It's just, it sounds very similar to something that I've heard in my life. Anyway... So what else happens? Yeah. That's where this comes from. You know, there's a lot of support, a lot of goodwill, positive energy that is being wished into the situation, that's being held on to in the situation. Now, I'd be careful. Why are you not focusing all the way, damn you? <laughs> I'd be careful with the holding on thing because I just used that word holding on but then we talked a little bit earlier about the aspect of releasing and how some Virgos or some people in this situation are having a pretty good time of releasing or, or finding it easy to you know kind of peacefully or calmly release I'm saying hold on because this Knight of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, you don't have to be dealing with a Water Sign, you know the deal. Um, but I'm saying this hold on thing because he's holding on to the mane of the horse and he's also holding on to this cup. So there might be sort of like a, you know, holding a torch kind of energy, holding on to hope kind of energy, which is good, but then also can be... Ah. Uh, It can lead to unnecessary strife, unnecessary hurt feelings, unnecessary mm, disappointment, okay? Um, so be careful. But this Nine of Cups, I think, mostly is a positive energy that, that, that is being used here or utilized in some type of way, I should say. Um, it's loving, it's compassionate, uh, whether this, oh, did I say knight? It's a king, my bad, king, even, even more so now. I think I said knight, my bad, it's a king, 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 even more so now. There's this holding on aspect. 
because the knights are known for movement. And I think I said knight because I saw the horse. And I, whenever I see horses, I automatically think that. So that's my bad. This is a king. So even more the holding on, holding a torch. Ah, man. Okay. Now that, oof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, be careful with that, Virgo. If it's you, moderate yourself. You know, check in with yourself. Try and, you know, untangle that a little bit. Um, release the grip a little bit. If it's someone else, maybe have sympathy for that person. Maybe try to understand their point of view. But there's something here about holding, holding, holding on. And mm, I'm going back to the empress and the money and the giving towards child support or alimony. And how on the far side of this king of cups is the ten of cups. And in between is this Empress energy. So there could be that. It could be that this King of Cups, in some of your cases, is reluctant to let go. Reluctant to release fully. Um, and maybe what they're holding on to, or, or the only thing they have to hold on to, is that distant support that distant, isolated support that we were talking about in the Empress card, right? Like, mm, God. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm getting the sense of like, again, from afar, this is all I can offer. This is all I can do. And it comes from a, a loving place. It comes from a place of compassion. It comes from a place of wanting to be a part of, but knowing that you can't be a part of, because again, the high priestess is here and that speaks to a subconscious knowing something that has always been there that you've always known would be the truth or known that you would live through. <clears throat> excuse me, known that you would experience but never fully grasped it or never, you haven't lived through that experience until this moment. Does that make sense? So it's like literally all, what I'm seeing is someone saying, all I can do is give money. I can't do anything else. I'm not allowed to be there. I'm not allowed to speak. I'm not allowed to visit. I'm not allowed this. I'm not allowed that. Or, ah, there's another side to this. Because that, that, that first side is very sad. I got I to gotta be honest. That first side is very sad. There's another part of this where, again, like, because of opportunities, maybe in job, maybe in career, where, you know, in a household, Maybe somebody has to go abroad or has to be relocated so that they can support their family. And so not that a family is broken up, not that a family is separated or anything like that in, in, in like official terms, you know, through, you know, no longer the parents are no longer together. In some cases, the parents are very much together, but one has to be away for now and it's temporary. In other cases, it's not very temporary. In other cases, it is very temporary. Regardless, there's a pain, a uh, a sadness that someone feels because the king of cups can be a sad character there is a sadness someone feels because this is all they can do all i can do is offer money all i can do is send birthday cards all i can do is video chats via zoom or something like that oh that's interesting because they're like they're jumping me ahead to this nine of wands some of you this is a prison thing um and i mean what can you do that's a literal relocation. That's literally, you can't be there physically. That's literally, I'll be talking to you through, you know, two inches of, of thick plexiglass or something like that, you know? Um, but that's not for everybody, okay, obviously. Um, poopy, I don't like that. That's very sad because I feel across the board, Virgo, it feels like the love and the compassion and the connection is here. I'm not feeling for the most part, we're talking about people who hate each other, people who are upset with each other, people who are, you know, trying to be combative. For the most part, I'm not feeling that. There is a tad, there is a potential for some, because the Nine of Wands is here. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in two seconds. So that is a potential, but for the most, for most of you in this energy, it's, it's, it's copacetic it's connective, it's, it's positive, even though it's not possibly showing up in the ways that everybody wants. The connection might not be as full on 
and as immediate. You can't reach out and touch the person. You can't reach out and hug them. You can't reach out and, 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 and hold their hand or something like that. Or you can't see them regularly because court, whatever. Interesting. Now, Nine of Wands in reverse. For some of you, like I said, this is uh, about a prison story or a jail story. So someone is behind bars. As those wands are standing up there, they kind of mimic bars. And that could be the reason why someone literally can't be around their family, their friends, is because they're detained. Okay? Uh, but Nine of Wands in reverse, I'm feeling, is like just sort of this... <sighs> Going back to that phrase, it is what it is. Because when we have the Nine of Wands in the upright, we're, 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 we're fighting something or we're putting an effort and we're standing our ground and we're taking a stand and all that good stuff. And we're really, you know, we're tired, but we're still giving it our all. We're still going to push past our limits. Nine of Wands in reverse, there are no more, there's no more pushing past. There is sort of like this waving of a white flag. Like, okay you know we have to accept that this is this is okay again it is what it is and you just accept it um i hate that phrase so much anyway <laughs> nine of wands i feel again it's in this line of like huge hits in the in the sense of <clears throat> excuse me chapter endings pivotal changes in life or you know particularly um, like really it's like highlighted like and the universe kind of again speaks to the inevitable we all eventually get to the universe card it's the last card in the major arcanas right we all eventually are going to get there and so there's this unavoidable sense that comes with not only the universe, but also the high priestess. And so because it's inevitable, change in general in life is inevitable. Certain unconscious truths to a certain degree could be viewed as inevitable. If that's the case, then any effort to fight against it would be not wasted, but thwarted. Eventually, you would have to stop. Eventually, the circumstances the timing, the, the other people in the situation, the change in people's attitudes, the change in your attitudes or behaviors, it would eventually lead to a tapping out. And that's kind of what I feel is going on here. A little bit of a tap out or a time out, again, with some people who are isolated or they're in certain situations where they cannot reconnect with their, with their loved ones or, or people back home or something like that. It would always lead to this is what this feels like. And Virgo, I don't really know that you are shocked by this. I don't know that you are deeply hurt by this. I th Again, I keep getting this word, bittersweet. Maybe melancholy is another word that we could use here. But I don't sense like stark raving mad and, you know, flying off the handle, throwing things across the room. Like I'm not sensing that visceral, uh, very explosive reaction when things don't go the way that we want or the ways in which that we've been working towards. I feel there's like this, again, waving of a white flag. Okay, you got me. <sighs> you know, you might be saying that to yourself. You might be saying that to God, to the universe, to spirit, whatever. You might be saying that to the authorities. If you're turning yourself in because you know you've got warrants or someone else's or whatever, it's like, all right, you got me. I can't keep running forever. Again, relocation, relocation. You know, maybe somebody was on the lam for a long time. Who knows? And now suddenly they realize they can't keep up with that anymore. So they give up. And I'm not saying give up as in like, give up because you don't care. Give up, throw in the towel. It's, it's, it's like a, I've tried my best. And this went as far as it could go and it worked for a while, but now it can't work that way anymore because there's just a new page in this chapter or in this book. We've turned the page. We've gone from chapter four to chapter five. Oh, chapter five. What's that? What's chapter five? That's a, that's a, that's a financial term. Chapter, chapter five. Shit. Chapter 11 is bankruptcy. What's chapter five? I don't remember, but maybe that floats for some of you, whatever chapter five means. 
<laughs> but you turn the page, you leave chapter four, and now you're on chapter five, and that's it. The story must go on. The book must be completed, right? So it's, it's very accepting. It's very accepting. Star card, very accepting. Outcome card is the star card, major kind of for Aquarius. This has been coming up for a few signs also in the month. Um, wow. This is like a deep cleansing card. Some of you, interesting. I'm getting like a spiritual conversion. Like maybe because, <laughs> you know, in the back of my head, I do know a lot of people when they go to prison, they get right with God, whatever God you end up floating towards, whether that be you know, Jesus or Allah or some someone else, okay? A lot of people find their spiritual wellness and their religious, mm, uh, I suppose, redemption when they're in jail. So that, for those where you got somebody inside or you're going inside, badow. Spiritual wellness, spiritual healing, uh, spiritual cleansing, and, you know, maybe there's going to be some baptismals, you know, down at the county jail or, you know, down at, down in a... <laughs> Her Majesty's, you know, what do they call it in the UK? I forget. Staying at Her Majesty's Leisure or something like that. I can't remember what they say, but whatever. Um, so that plays for a few of you. That's not for everybody. But in general, I do get the sense of like still cleansing and coming out the other side with a new perspective, with uh, a new sense of self or a new lease on life, perhaps, um, you know, kind of letting bygones be bygones if there's any type that need to be let go of or or need to be reconciled with and and just being at peace with things is what this feels like deeply being at personal peace with things i like that even if it equals having to sacrifice certain things or having to uh again release of certain things but again what i was saying earlier is, is it feels like for most of you the way in which you're releasing is very peacefully it's it's like where maybe before you were fighting a little bit, maybe before with the Nine of Wands in reverse, maybe before at some point you were a little more fired up. And now there's just like a, you know, it's not getting me anywhere or the page is turning. You can feel it. Like many of you can feel the pages turning in your life, whatever that means to you. And there's no point in fighting it because the story must go on. If you want to end the book on chapter four and not go to, you know, chapter five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever it may be, have you lived your life? Hmm, interesting. Have you lived your life if you refuse to turn the page? Very interesting. Some of you are like thinking in those terms. <laughs> I can't live my life trying to only read my life, my life's book up to chapter four. And I don't know what else happens with me. I don't know what the rest of my story is. Again, like this whole 45 years in Cincinnati thing. All right, the first four chapters of my life spent in Cincinnati. Turn the page. We're moving to my good old friend, Boise. <laughs> he used to talk about Boise all the time doing these readings. But you know what I mean. Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, turn that page, read the next chapter. And I feel that star card is very accepting of that journey, accepting of that, that transition. Okay? Herbal, but can't even talk. Overall energy, thank you, is the full card, secondary major for Aquarius. So if that plays twice. I haven't done Aquarius' reading, but maybe once I do it, maybe it might be worth a watch. But that's twice for Aquarius for some of you with the full card here. Uh, so yes, new chapters, baby. What was what were we just talking about? Um, there, there might be a little worry because, I mean, you see this guy. He's got a tiger at his back. He's got a alligator right below him in the water. And uh, he doesn't seem too phased. And that's kind of the point. Whatever worry, whatever uh, caution there might be in, in, in walking down new paths, in, in experiencing new uh, chapters of your life, new phases of your life, walking down uh, different avenues, meeting new people, getting involved in new situations, all the worry that exists there, the fool does not acknowledge it or does not keep it in their conscious mind. Here we go again. Oh, this is a deja vu. Hello. I dreamt this. Precognition. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I dreamt this like three weeks ago. Very interesting because I remember seeing this card. And what did I just say? I was talking about avenues. Yeah. Wow. I dreamt that. Okay. Anyway, this is typical. <laughs> so the caution, yes, the conscious awareness of the caution 
the fool doesn't give in to that. And we were talking earlier with the high priestess about unconscious knowing or unconscious awareness, right? And just kind of going with it and trusting your guides or trusting your own intuition, right? That also plays here, but I think it plays more in your physical, again, your conscious everyday body, okay? The fool just takes those leaps of faith uh, doesn't really look back, doesn't take much baggage with them. As you can see on this card, he's got one little knapsack, one little book bag or backpack or whatever, and nothing else. Or she, it could be a, it could be a female, it doesn't matter, right? And so that kind of is going on, maybe again with this whole issue, not issue, but this theme of travel and movement. Maybe some of you literally just pack one bag and you go. I don't know why you would do that or, or if that's feasible for you, if that's responsible, I don't know. But maybe some of you are doing that. Like it feels very like unbridling, like just like if I could take off this hoodie, like that's what it feels like, like taking off this hoodie and throwing it to the ground and walking off. And I don't know if that's, again, a responsible thing to do. I don't know if that's necessarily feasible for you to do, but like that's the sensation that I think is here and it applies to you or other or another person, okay? Virgo, that is your reading for November. If you like this reading, leave a like button, or <laughs> leave a like button, leave a like down below. Uh, if you wanna leave a comment, let me know how this resonated in your life, please do so. I love to read your comments. Feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, that would be amazing. I would appreciate you so much if you did that. Uh, Virgo, I'll be back soon to do your mid-November readings. Again, if you want to get at me for a personal reading, you can look for that information down in the description box below. Until then, my friends, I thank you all so much for watching. Take care.